house to house. Houses stand out in a market. Well, Krauss is a speaker. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's tough. Uh, twice a year, he lets me drive the tractor and cart people around. I run things over once in a while, but, uh, like this past year, uh, one of the posts, but never mind. I've never run a car over yet. Um, and that's part and parcel. Uh, I actually give a tour of how we grow this stuff. Uh, you have tours running um, most weekends, uh, and uh, there is a narrator on there. But uh, twice a year, they get to have a real professor from the university doing the tour. And uh, I've had entire busloads of Asian tourists wanting to take pictures with me. And I'm not a people person. <laughs> so, very interesting stuff. So uh, I'll say just about everything I wanted to say. So this will be really short and sweet. And then I can get my flight back home. Uh, I have to use that picture again, and this time I'm saying if it was as easy as that, if all of the berries would look like that, uh, we wouldn't have to advertise anywhere. Uh, they would sell themselves. And strawberries are, uh, up until we're going to grow hascaps more, uh, the blue honeysuckle, which comes in even earlier. The flowers are open in February already. Uh, I still haven't figured out how they even pollinate. <coughs> There's some fungus plants out there at the time, but uh, after that, I have no idea how they pollinate at that time of the year. They are going to be earlier than the strawberries, but strawberries the first fruit, uh, so everybody runs for the strawberries. So it's, uh, to me, the most important fruit. I don't care what the numbers say. Um, if it wasn't for that lead-in fruit, uh, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't have the market. Uh, that we do have during the rest of the year. This has been traditionally uh, for probably thousands of years when the uh, Romans uh, had to, uh, at the most ridiculous time of the year, have to have their fill of strawberries. Even then, they were the small fill. Uh, they were the ones that started the season. So again, you want to start with a strategic plan, the whole thing. You want to set out uh, Alf says it so nonchalantly, and then we do this, and then we do that, and then we do that. Uh, he has consultants that help him with that. He has uh, sat down with the entire office staff to plan all those things. <coughs> You've got to do the planning. There's a lot of thought behind that, uh, a lot of intricate uh, negotiation of how can we do this while we're at the same time doing that, and there's the other, and so on. All of a sudden, I don't even have enough parking spot for my people my workers. Uh, as we see in the 1st of July, that's like your 4th of July, uh, I don't know how many thousands of cars show up there, each of them at least two or three uh, people in them, and uh, it's a zoo. People are parked out at the street, and this doesn't just happen at this one shop, it's at other shops too. Also, I think you're doing the best job of all of our um, uh, shops in British Columbia. Uh, we, some of you went to the North American Strawberry Growers Association's farm tour uh, up uh, in BC. Anybody here? Yeah, you saw that. And there was one stop that was left out because the whole farm burned down. Uh, the building that uh, was going to be shown off uh, burned down, and I'm helping these people to recover. And so we're now going through that entire strategic planning. How do we do this? How do we do that? How do we deal with those ridiculous rules? Uh, because now all of a sudden it's all gone. Now you have to start all over again to beg them for a license for that, to go around it this way or go around it that way, uh, call in a favor here, call in a favor there, yeah, that still works. Uh, make absolutely sure you get this all in place months ahead of actually doing it because uh, they don't want you to get started until uh, you have all the permits together. And some of the permits, one of them is dependent on the next one, is dependent on the next one. Uh, try a winery. If you've never done that paperwork for a winery, good luck, with, uh, good luck to you. Uh, that's a nightmare. Uh, switching to fresh is one of the things uh, you make um, a mark in your market. Uh, and when I'm saying uh, switching to fresh, um, 
you, you go to the different varieties. I'll show the variety slides again that I showed earlier. Uh, you show people uh, the different varieties. This is for this purpose, this is for that purpose, that is for that purpose. It goes for the raspberries, it goes for the strawberries. We've got one variety that people like the best for looks in the interior of our province that we cannot for the world sell in the Fraser Valley. Uh, that variety, um, is it Shuswap? I forgot. I think it's Shuswap, right? Anyway, that's beautiful, glossy red, like fire engine red, and then it has a white band, and then this beautiful calyx, green calyx. I think it's Shuswap. Like it's so old, I've forgotten it. But they love that there in the interior. They can grow it beautifully in the face of Valley. We can't grow it for the world. Uh, it gets uh, all sorts of diseases. Uh, and it doesn't size up for whatever reason. Um, different regions, different varieties work. And that variety, people ask for it by name. And uh, again, like I said earlier, uh, when I, in the first talk, uh, you can sell it as a varietal. Become better growers. There is something that I keep now preaching to the blueberry growers. We've got part-time growers, we've got full-time growers, not everybody does a beautiful job like uh, Alf does. Uh, crappy fruit quality will haunt you. Very simple. If it's the best fruit quality, there will be word of mouth and people will talk about it and people will say, have you seen that fruit over there in that market? And consumers are very fickle. Uh, it spreads nowadays, it spreads within hours. If there's something wrong with with something, it spreads even faster, within minutes. You, you know how that goes, going viral, etc. Out of season production, very important. You want to stretch the season out, uh, if you can stand it. I'll set that up already. If you can stand it having people there so long, and looking at the picking, etc. Uh, don't let somebody else uh, go into that market. You have to cover that market. You can set yourself aside by having something that normal farms do not have. And that is before the season, you have some fruit, and after the season, you have some fruit. Whether that is done with covers, uh, or it's done with varieties, uh, or it's done by pre-growing the plants uh, in a greenhouse, plugging them into plastic and having them uh, therefore stronger and earlier that way. It's up to you. And again, it's if you're in a frost pocket, don't have early blooming varieties. Right? You, you got to watch that to your microclimate. Somebody asked me once in an arbitration, do microclimates exist? And I looked at the person, that is the most stupid question I've ever heard, of course. So you got to trim it to your uh, microclimate. Um, value added, I've talked about that uh, enough. And I can't say enough about it. Value added, value added, value added. You got to do something with the product. Uh, I've talked about. I was going to talk about, and then he asked me about pizza. Uh, but I, I eat uh, thirty thousand as half of your pies too, as we can clearly see. Right? Uh, I'm a good customer. You, you should check that one day. Um, Pacific Northwest breeding programs. Our collaboration. And now I'm talking about standing out as a region uh, by itself. We are known for the quality of our berries. We're known for our varieties. We're known for producing the best. Uh, that is another way to set ourselves apart from a grower in Florida, in California, in wherever, uh, or anywhere else in the world, from let's say from Chile. Yeah. The new varieties. Uh, I will show the variety names again. I'll skip over those. Collaborations amongst the growers. Uh, I've talked about that. Uh, cross commodities is a fantastic way uh, to set yourself apart. Uh, I go to uh, some other farm markets and I find his product actually uh, on the shelf there on the farm market. Um, the same price actually as I find it uh, with them. So something good is happening there, and I like to see that because I, uh, whoever shows up has to go on a farm tour, farm market tour with me, 
and I'm showing them all. See, this is from that farm, that's from that farm, etc. Uh, processors and packers can help work together for the promotion part. Some, uh, when you're small, you can't do all these things that Alf was talking about and, and that you see in some other operations. There is some custom packing available, and there's some uh, custom making uh, nice boxes for yourself to set yourself uh, apart, etc. So it tie into this game. BC uh, Agriculture Ministry and uh, Feds have programs available that will help with the business side of things. Uh, if you do a search uh, for planning for profit, British Columbia, uh, you will actually find the same kind of sheets that, what was his name? Uh, I forget, Craig? Clark. Clark uh, did. We have those online too. The strawberry one is really fresh. It's 1990 something, I believe. <laughs> but the blueberry one is uh, more recent, okay? Uh, is this a strawberry conference? Okay. Uh, I didn't vote earlier. Uh, working together with Washington, Oregon, California has really helped us uh, promote through the region because just California promoting strawberries by itself uh, as a generic product helps us to sell strawberries, even on the local side. Uh, that's compared to the rest of the continent, compared to the rest of the world, because we're now dealing with the global market. And if you think, oh, I'm too small, no, 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 it affects you too. It affects you on the supply side, and it affects you uh, on the sales side. I leave the consultants out. Uh, I'm actually working with school districts to um, promote eating agriculture products that are close to us. We have a program in our schools, and you can push for that if you haven't got it already. I, I'm done uh, on that. Uh, eat local foods and uh, get the kids when they're in elementary school and grow them up to not a 100-mile diet, but maybe a 10-mile diet. Uh, eat the local stuff. Uh, I'm going to skip the varieties because we've talked about them enough, especially the denotals. Uh, a few other things is when you're starting a crop, this is a different example. I couldn't um, fast enough find a good example. When people are planting blueberries, they're usually in the first two, three years, they grow strawberries in the middle. And I hate it. You know why? Because they don't require the same sprays. They don't require the same fertilizer. They don't require the same irrigation. They don't even require the same pH. I hate it. So be careful when you do stuff like that. Uh, they don't like each other. Uh, we're working on canopy management, plant growth regulators to manipulate the plants even more, to get the fruit at the right time, to make a plant more efficient, uh, to stop the runnering, for instance, of the denutrals. We found a way uh, to stop the runnery and we found a way to turn it back on for the nurseries to, to have their runners. So uh, with naturally occurring plant growth <coughs> regularly. So uh, this is not gene splicing or anything like that. It's still something that's acceptable uh, to consumers. The rest of it I've talked about. Uh, the next step from Tom W and Tom S, uh, growing in the greenhouse, uh, this was a fantastic one, and they allowed me to participate in that uh, because they had nothing but problems with fertility. And guess what the major problem was in there? Calcium. Okay, that's why I'm harping on on calcium all the time. Uh, it, was, uh, it wasn't just calcium, but it was also boron, manganese, etc. Those uh, micronutrients. Uh, they they were a problem, but we fine-tuned it, and this was uh, just running smoothly, and then he sold. Uh, so <laughs> uh, the next stuff that uh, we're looking at, especially here, is the green chemicals to support the plants uh, themselves having their um, own defenses cranked up and to use uh, more natural uh, insecticides, fungicides, even herbicides, or make herbicides completely irrelevant to us, let's say, in the greenhouse, under tunnels, etc., for the matting that we can use, the different kinds of mattings. Um, and we're playing around with fumigation by, um, what did I say earlier to my neighbors? I forgot. Mustard. Mustard, good. Yeah, the mustard weeds. 
He's, he's already going to try it, right? Yeah. All right, so uh, big time here. Uh, natural oils uh, are coming more and more to the foreground. I wish I had the EPA green registration program in front of me uh, because you have some of them already. We don't. And I'm trying to desperately bring some of those chemicals up to us because our chemicals are being taken away more and more and more. And when we can advertise uh, that we're doing uh, not harsh chemicals anymore, we're only doing those wonderful green chemicals that everybody else, including the organic growers, can use, we're going to stand out in a crowded market. And typical Canadian, I misappropriated a mountain in Washington State. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. Uh, we have one more speaker in this series. What about the SWD? I haven't heard anything on that. SWD yeah. spotted. Yeah. Spotted yeah. ring Drosophila. It's a relatively new pest. It's not new anymore. Uh, it goes on all of our soft fruit. Um, and it's a tremendous problem because we really don't have any chemicals to deal with it. We were almost completely chemical free before we uh, got that darn insect coming into uh, our continent. And we're dealing with it with trapping, etc., etc. Uh, if you want to know, Tom, do you want to give the link out right now? Well, I think Bob knows my link pretty well. I know his link. The, uh, I was wondering what you guys are doing. There's the uh, same thing. We're working together. Yeah. We've okay, been working with, with California, Oregon, and Washington on that. Like we, we're a one single region. We have to because that thing doesn't uh, stop at the border. They stand there and want the passport, and those little things have their passports ready. <laughs> they got a lot more problems than we do, Bob. They don't have the chemicals. We don't have the chemicals you have. <laughs>